My name's Hugh Reed. I'm the CEO and founder of Reed Bar Review and Reed Law Group, a company that not only helps uh, servicemen and women around the world, uh, represents them, but a company that also takes uh, the bar exam every six months, and I think that's important to you. We're here to talk about evidence today. Uh, for starters, obviously the federal rules of evidence, mine are very well marked, is the starting point because that's what's tested. The next thing you need to do about evidence is to make sure you understand what's being tested. That is, you go to the National Conference of Bar Examiners website and you can see that evidence is tested in five major categories. Um, one, presentation of evidence. Number two, uh, relevancy and reasons for excluding relevant evidence. Number three, privileges and policy exclusions. Number four, writings, recordings, and fo photographs. And number five, hearsay and circumstances of its admissibility. Now, you've got to know that these evidence questions are really good news on the multi-state bar exam. Uh, obviously, you're going to get approximately 33 questions in evidence, as you do all other subjects. Torts and contracts are going to be tested approximately 34 questions. Ten questions out of 200 now in the multi-state are experimental questions, much like the multi-state professional responsibility examination. You're get a guinea pig for those 10 questions. They're not going to count, but we don't know which ones they are, so we've got to try equally as hard on all of these questions. All right, now, how do you approach evidence? Well, first of all, uh, the, ev the good news is that evidence questions are short fact patterns for the most part. That is, uh, we can make up a lot of time on evidence questions. Uh, the plaintiff's names will start with a P, Papa, Prentice, etc. The defendant's names will start with a D, Delta, Doofus, etc., Dentist. Uh, and the witnesses' names will start with a W, uh, Wilbur, Wanda, uh, and so on. That's very important because you need to know who we're talking about. You see, the federal rules of evidence oftentimes are different from parties' opponents than they are for witnesses. So short fact patterns, pro, um, uh, plaintiff uh, plea uh, with a P or prosecution with a P, uh, defendants with a D, witnesses with a W. Most of these questions are dichotomy questions. Now I just got back from taking a bar exam. Again, I take it every six months and that's important to you because up to 60 questions out of 200 questions are repeated for statistical um, equating purposes. So up to 60 questions out of 200 are repeat questions. Now I, I cannot give you those questions, I'm prohibited from doing so, but I can, sure, uh, I can make sure that you understand these type of fact patterns and that you're successful doing this. I just happened to listen to another bar review lecturer, um, which uh, was surprising. He didn't even know how many questions were tested in evidence and he got half of the uh, rules wrong, which was really not good. Not only didn't he know how it's tested, then he didn't know evidence. And of course, uh, most of these uh, lecturers for these larger bar reviews uh, have never taken a multi-state bar exam. They were licensed before the multi-state was a uh, requirement, and of course they don't take it on a regular basis. Indeed, the CEO of Barbary, for example, has never taken and passed a multi-state bar exam, and he lectures uh, on multi-state subjects all over the country. Uh, go figure. I mean, it doesn't make sense because most candidates will pass or fail their bar exam based on the multi-state, based on how they perform on the multi-state bar exam. Now let's talk about evidence a little bit more. Dichotomy questions, that is two answer choices holding one way, two answer choices holding another. So admissible, admissible, inadmissible, admissible with rationale. Don't freak out if you see three to one uh, uh, substantive splits. In other words, three uh, answer choices holding one way and one holding another. Now what's hard for me, and I'm sure it's going to be somewhat uncomfortable for you, if it says not admissible because of hearsay. Or, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're left with one of those choices. So you've got to eliminate answer choices and back into the, back into the right answer choice got to eliminate answer choice, never look for the right answer. And that's the key to doing well on multiple choice exams. And of course, if you get it down to two answer choices, that's good news for you because then 
you can use our acrostic, Larry liked fried shrimp perfectly cooked. That is, Larry, choose law over fact. Liked, choose the longer, more specific answer choices. Fried, consider what happens first in time uh, before you uh, look at the other answer choices. In other words, we first have to have hearsay before we uh, think about the exclusions or the exceptions to hearsay. Uh, Larry like fried shrimp, S, stay away, stay away from Latin terminology, res gesti, for example. Uh, stay away from those. Also stay away from terminology you've never heard of before in law school, the negative inferential test, for example, or affirmative inferential test. Doesn't mean a darn thing, and I've got a whole list of red herrings or sucker choices or wrong answers that we provide you because you can eliminate those right away. And of course, stay away. Um, uh, from Latin terms, stay away from terminology you've never heard of before. And, um, and stay away from absolutes. This must be admissible. This never is admissible. Those, that's, that's simply not right. The judge has a great deal of leeway in trials to allow something. So make sure you stay away from absolutes. So Larry liked fried shrimp. Uh, perfectly play, play word association. The reason I think it's important for you to understand what category is being tested in evidence so you don't get things mixed up. For example, category one in presentation of evidence, refreshing recollection. You can use anything to refresh a witness's recollection. Whereas category five, and as an exception to here, say 8035 to be exact, um, recorded recollection, recorded recollection. So past recollection recorded versus refreshing recollection, often tested, a lot of candidates get it mixed up. So you don't want it to, you want to make sure you don't get it mixed up. So, and then finally C, um, Larry like fried shrimp, perfectly cooked. Cooked stands for check your modifiers, if, because, unless. Choose them in that order. Uh, Admissible if wins over admissible because, or admissible if certainly wins over admissible unless. What else do you need to know? Well, uh, we give you a lot of mnemonics and memory devices in evidence, um, and I think you'll like them. For example, uh, you have to start with every evidence question, whether it's a multi-state question or an essay question, with the proposition, is it relevant? That is, is it material, is it probative? Most things are logically relevant, but we have one bombshell rule, Federal Rule 403, that says even though something is logically relevant, it may not be legally relevant. And 403 basically says that something, if it's substantially, uh, uh, substantially outweighed, the probativeness is substantially outweighed by the prejudicial effect, it's not admissible. Let me tell you what that rule is in order, and I was able to apply it on an essay on this very last exam, which, uh, in fact, seven of the eight essays I had, I used are mnemonics. And these mnemonics are important because they include all the buzzwords. So 403, even though something is logically relevant under 401 and 402, 403 to me is damn crash made us wait cautiously. Damn, danger of unfair prejudice made misleading the jury, us, undue delay, wait, waste of time, uh, made us, uh, damn, cra I'm sorry, damn crash made us wait cautiously, damn, danger of unfair prejudice, crash, confusion of the issues, made, misleading the jury, us, undue delay, us, wait, W, waste of time, and finally, cautiously, cumulative ev evidence, piling it on. So if you remember these buzzwords and get them into your answer, you're going to be very, very happy. Now, in closing, the 400 series, recovery and exclusions, re relevancy and the exclusions to relevancy are very important. The 500 series, privileges, there's only one uh, rule, rule 501. The 600 series, limitations of tests, uh, of, of, of testimony and witnesses. The 700 series, lay in expert witnesses the 800 series hearsay, and then 900 through 1004, objects, writings, and evidence, contents of writings. Well, I could go on and on about evidence. I hope you'll like some of these mnemonics and memory devices. Pick, feel free to pick one of these test 
uh, prep kits, and if evidence is one of the areas you're having problems with, that should, that's your starting point. I wish you the best of luck. Email us or, um, or uh, call us if you have any questions. Thank you.